Okay, so now we're going to solve linear inequalities and discuss the, the difference between a union and intersection of two sets. All right, so let's review quickly about interval notation. So interval notation uses parentheses to show greater than or less than relationships and uses brackets to show less than or equal to and greater than or equal to relationships. Okay. With interval notation, the upper and lower boundaries of inequality range are separated by a comma and are closed either by parentheses or brackets. Okay. If an upper boundary is unlimited, the symbol infinity is used and negative infinity is used for an unlimited lower boundary. <clears throat> parentheses rather than brackets are used to show plus or minus infinity symbols since theoretically we can never reach infinity. As I would tell students, you don't know the biggest or smallest number in the world, so we can't include it. All right, so interval notation. For instance, x is less than 2. Okay, so what does that mean then? If I want to be able to write that as such, notice here it is going to negative infinity and stopping at 2. 2 is not included, so we know after the 2 we have a parenthesis. With x is less than or equal to 2, again, negative infinity. This time around, 2 is included, so after the 2, we are putting a bracket. So in other words, if I have a symbol less than or greater than, I'm going to be using parentheses. Okay? Less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, I will be using brackets. Okay. Similar argument with x is greater than 2, it starts at 2 and goes to infinity. Notice it's not included, it's a parenthesis. Here, x is greater than or equal to 2, notice 2 is included, and 2 has a bracket before it. Okay. All right, so here we can talk about, for instance, negative 1 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 2. What does that mean? That means x is greater than negative 1 and x is less than or equal to 2. Notice the negative 1 is not included. We have a parenthesis before the negative 1. The 2 is included. We have a bracket after the 2. And if you notice, set builder notation is exactly the same as the inequalities originally, except we have braces. And how do you read this? All x is such that x is less than or equal to 2. Okay, so now let's solve some linear inequalities. But before we get to that, solving linear inequalities is the same as solving linear equations, except when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must switch the inequality sign. For instance, here's what I show my students. 2 is greater than 1. If I multiply both sides by negative 1, which I'm allowed to do, I get something to the effect of negative 2 is greater than negative 1. That's a problem. That's not a true statement. If I switch the inequality statement or sign, now I have a true statement. So I can make a similar argument about dividing both sides by a negative 1. Again, I only need to switch the inequality sign when I'm multiplying or dividing by a negative number. Okay, so let's solve the inequalities, graph the solution, and write the solution in interval and set builder notation. So first off, the example on the left here, I will distribute the negative 3 and the 2. Now, for a different color, I will combine. Now, I will put all of my x's on the left-hand side and all my non-x terms on the right-hand side of the inequality. So I'll subtract 2x first. And I'll add 18. Divide both sides by negative 5. Now again, because I am dividing both sides by a negative, I have to switch the inequality sign. So in this case, I have x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Graph it. Values bigger than negative 2 are to the right. Okay. And again, notice it's included. I will put a bracket. Now, I choose to put brackets rather than closed circles because of the fact 
that it's easier for me to write it in interval notation. So interval notation will be that same bracket negative two comma infinity. But remember, after the infinity will be a parenthesis. That is interval notation. Set builder notation is all values of x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. That's set builder. Okay, so now let's take a look at the inequality on the right here. So again, we don't like working with fractions. So the best way to get rid of fractions is to multiply every single term by the least common denominator or the LCD. Well, the LCD in this case is 12. So I will multiply every single term by 12. Okay, so with a different color, let's divide out common factors. I can divide out a 2. That's 6s. Here I can divide out a 3. So that's left with 4 minus, minus 4 times quantity s minus 3. Divide out. Twelve divide out. Now remember, you don't have 0, you have 1. Okay? Distribute the negative 4. Now, I'm going to combine like terms. Now, again, similarly to what I did in the last problem, I'm going to put all my S's on one side, and I'm going to put my non-S terms on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 3S, and I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. Now, keep in mind, I'm not done. I'm going to have to divide both sides by a negative 1. And because I'm dividing by a negative 1, I must switch the inequality sign. And a negative 13 divided by a negative 1. 1 is a positive 13. Okay, let's graph. So, draw my number line. So, it's 13. Now, again, because 13 is not included, I'm going to put a parenthesis. Numbers smaller than 13 are to the left. A 13 on a number line. All right, interval notation starts with negative infinity. Again, don't know the smallest number in the world. I'm going to put a parenthesis before the negative infinity. 13 is not included. I put a parenthesis. That's interval notation. Okay. And then set builder. Okay, it's S's, so all S's such that S is less than 13. And that is my set builder notation. Okay, so the other part in this video I'd like to talk about is what unions and intersections are. The union is the set formed by combining all the elements in A with the elements in B. Okay, so that means I, an a x value or a number or an element can be in set A or in set B or both. So if I draw a Venn diagram for this, that's this. So here's A, and here's B. Okay. So now what I would like to do is I'll change colors, and I'm going to color in what the union of, of A union B is going to be. That's everything I have shaded in blue. I can be in A, I can be in B, or I can be in both. Okay. All right, the intersection, on the other hand, tells me I must be in both A and B. Okay, so let me redraw the Venn diagram. Now, A and B, I'm going to do a different color. That is the intersection of A and B. Do you notice the difference between them, right? Intersections, more times than not, is going to be a smaller set than the union. Okay, so now I want to be able to determine the union and intersections of each and then write your final answer in interval notation. 
What I would suggest for this is to draw number lines for both and to see where they are going to intersect and what the union is going to be. All right, let's start with A then. I'm going to do that in black. Okay, so negative 3 to 4. All right, so that's A. Now, for B, I will do this in blue. Now, keep in mind, 1 should be somewhere in between negative 3 and 4 when you do this, and 8 should be after the 4, so that you can have a better indication of what the union and the intersection is going to be. All right, let's start with the intersection. The intersection tells me where they are going to intersect. Okay, so let me write this out here. Now, they both start at 1. Now, the problem is 1 is not included in B. So 1 is not going to be in the intersection of A and B. How far to the right does both A and B go? Well, looks like 4. Now, because 4 is in A and 4 is in B, 4 is in the intersection of A and B. So the intersection of this is 1, can't include it, to 4, and I can include it. Now, what I will do is I will erase, erase, okay, and I will rewrite. So we can put this in again. Okay, so now I want to talk about the union of these two sets. Now remember, it could be however far to the left or to the right for this. Well, how far to the left does either of them, either of them go? Well, in this case, it is 2, negative 3. And notice these two sets are not disjointed. Well, disjointed means that they have absolutely no intersection. Well, we know it does have an intersection thanks to the previous part of this problem. So we know that either one of them starts at negative 3. Okay? And because negative 3 is in one of them, it's in the union of both. Now, how far to the right does either A or B go? Well, that goes to 8. Now, again, 8 is not included in A, and 8 is not included in B, so it cannot be included in the union. Another way to look at the union is if I put the red and the black together, Okay, what is that going to entail? Well, that would entail negative 3 to 4, okay, and then I'll stick to my blue in the same part. Again, where is the red or the blue going to be? From negative 3 to 8. That is the union of those two sets. And the intersection is only where they intersect or where they cross. And you can tell in this picture where the red and the blue are crossing. And that's exactly the, the answer that we have here. Okay, one other one with this, because we want to be clear with unions and intersections when we talk about compound inequalities next. Okay, so the first thing we would like to do here is to be able to graph E and F. Okay, so let's graph E first. Okay, let me get rid of the equal sign. I'll do this again. Okay, so negative 3 All right, so now let's do f. Now, f is telling me from what? Negative 10 to infinity. Well, we know negative 10 is farther to the right on a number, to the left, excuse me, on a number line than negative 3. Now, I want to talk about the intersection for these. So again, if I redraw this number line, in fact, let me see if I can draw one more on here. If I put in the black, 
and I put in the blue, the question is going to be, where does the black and the blue intersect? Well, we know it's going to intersect in this particular region. So where does it start? It starts at negative 10. Well, negative 10 is included in E, and it's included in F, so negative 10 will be included in the intersection. Now, how far to the right does the blue and the black go in this picture? Well, it goes to negative 3. Now, negative 3 is not included in E, so it's not going to be included in the intersection. Now, let's take a look at the union. Now, the union tells me then that it's the black and the blue combined. Do you see the black and the blue? When I color both of these in, everything is included here. There is nothing on this number line here that is not either in blue or in black. Well, how do you write all real numbers? Well, that's negative infinity to positive infinity. So in this case, the union is all real numbers.